Good afternoon, everybody. Um, hope you're, uh, everybody's enjoying their day today. So today we're going to go over and discuss some different types of um, exercises and maybe some other benefits. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Okay. Can anybody on the phone, can you uh, let me know if you can see the, the presentation? Hello? Anyone on the line? Yes, hello. Hi, can you see the presentation? Um, I'm just getting on the computer, so I will tell you in a second. <laughs> okay. It, yeah, not, I can I mean, see it. Okay. We're going to go through it. Um, so if you're only listening, you'll, you'll get the same benefit, um, just not as visual. Uh, okay. So a little bit uh, about me. Um, because I always like to make it about me. Um, you know, I grew up uh, like like most most kids. Um, I played sports, little league, soccer, and um, I did you know some track, and then uh, got into wrestling. And through wrestling, I got into some weightlifting and you know different types of exercise. And you know, over the last thirty plus years, um, you know, it's uh, fitness and exercise has become a passion of mine. And um, then ultimately this year, you know, um, I decided to pursue uh, becoming a certified personal trainer. The kids are grown. I have some more time and, you know, love working with people. So, um, you know, I, that's a, a career path, or not career path, but that's a, a goal that I, I have and decided to pursue. Um, so, along those lines, um, I learned a lot while while you know going through the personal training certification process, and uh, it was amazing how many things that I'd learned over the years that you know maybe I learned a little incorrectly. Um, and you know some of the finer points to, to exercise and the benefits of exercise and you know different types of exercise. So so that's where we are today. Uh, does did anybody want to uh, join in and, and tell us what the the last exercise they did was? The workforce challenge. The five workforce minutes. challenge. That's great. Um, that's Hiking. Awesome. Hiking. Nice. Um, or local, or did you? It's local. A I finally did one of those LL Bean outdoor activities. Oh, that's great. So we did a moderate hike in um, Pine Hills. Oh. Moonlight hike, except the moon didn't come out that night. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of different types of exercise, and um, you know there's a lot of different times throughout the day that you can do exercise. And there's no bad time. Any any part of the day that you do exercise is good. The only um, caveat to that is you don't want to participate in strenuous or even even light to moderate exercise more than or within two hours of when you're going to go to bed. Um, because then, you know, it, it can disrupt your sleep instead of benefiting, um, helping your sleep. So, there is a, a type of exercise that that is bad, um, and we'll show you on the next slide. The only bad workout is the one that you didn't do, um, because any workout that you do at any point throughout the day, throughout the week, it's a benefit. 95% um, of the struggle for, for everyone is getting to your workout and getting the workout program 
um, started. You know, in the fitness community, there's, well, people in general, um, human nature, a lot of times with diets, with exercise programs, it's, I'm going to start on Monday. And, you know, a lot of times that starts on Tuesday. <laughs> Um, but then you have to wait the, the whole whole week until the following Monday. Uh, we've all done it, and uh, and that's why the struggle is is, is so real. Um, so you never have to wait till Monday. Um, starting at any point is better than not starting. So let's explore some reasons why we should be exercising. So exercise reduces the risk of disease, it improves your energy and your mood, increases your self-confidence, and it also increases strength and flexibility. So currently, 34% of Americans are obese, which when I saw that number, I was shocked. One third of our population, or roughly 72 million Americans, are considered obese, which means they weigh in excess of 30 pounds of the recommended weight for their height or have a, um, a fat percentage of 30% or higher. So that all contributes to, to diseases, um, immobility. Is that BMI? Yes. Um, mobility issues and, um, and, and mental mood, uh, you know, it's all interrelated. So some of the diseases that exercise can help reduce are heart disease, diabetes, um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and in addition to you know helping with the obesity. So I'm sure all of us have woken up in a bad mood, had a rough day at work, um, or just on a drive home or to the gym, you know, it was stressful and, and not a pleasant experience. So exercise can actually change your mood and improve your mood. Um, so if you have had a rough day at work, go work out. It changes your mood because exercise increases your endorphin levels, which can contribute to feelings of euphoria. Um, so you're going to feel better if you have worked out. It's like some people after a run, they will they call it a runner's high. Uh, if you weight lift, you get this pump about you, and, and that's all because you know um, your metabolism is amped up, and these endorphins are, have been released into the bloodstream. Um, you're going to feel an accomplishment when you complete a workout. It, you know, you set a goal, you achieve it. it it's you know human nature. You're going to feel better about yourself. In addition, exercise helps your blood circulate more efficiently, allowing more oxygen to reach your brain, the bloodstream, which is better for your body. Uh, you're going to have more energy when your body works more efficiently. So if, if you have a car that, that's not working properly, you, you, it's the same, same concept. You know, if you're not going to run efficiently, you're going to burn through more gas. Same, same with your body. You burn through the fuel that you're, you're taking in if you're not operating at the, the peak performance, which can be. And exercise will help you achieve that efficiency. Uh, so with all these benefits, you're going to look better, you're going to feel better, and, uh, and who doesn't want to look better and feel better, right? Um, and because you look better and feel better, you're going to be more confident. You're going to have a better posture about it uh, as you walk around. In addition, being healthier and stronger, um, you know, everyday tasks become easier. Uh, you don't have to ask somebody to open the, the jar for you or, uh, you know, lift that, that heavy object up, up, put it above your head into the cupboard. Um, so let's look at what the definition of exercise is. Okay, exercise is defined as a bodily exertion for the sake of developing and maintaining physical fitness. And as we said, exercise can take many different forms. 
but there's one, one component of exercise that is the most important um, component. And that's fun. Exercise has to be fun. Because if exercise isn't fun, it's not going to be sustainable. And if you only exercise once in a while, your body isn't going to adjust and reap the benefits that you know the exercise should be providing. So there, we're going to cover three exercise categories: aerobic exercise, strength training, and flexibility. So most exercises can be included in each of these categories depending on the speed, intensity, and rest with which each exercise is performed. Aerobic literally means with oxygen, and it refers to the use of oxygen in the muscle's energy generating process. Aerobic includes any type of exercise performed at a moderate level of intensity for extended periods of time that maintains an increased heart rate. So an example would be jogging at a steady pace. That would be considered aerobic. Sprinting would be aerobic if it's done in sets, but it also would build, build muscle so it can be a strength training exercise. Yoga can be used to increase flexibility or build strength, but if it's performed at a higher pace, higher speed, it can also be an aerobic exercise. Now my favorite, strength training, um, is any activity that makes your muscles work harder than usual will, to build strength. So I love lifting weights, and um, my daughter is a cheerleader, was a cheerleader, and we used to have a lot of uh, back and forth as to you know, weightlifting, cheerleading, and which was a sport, which, which had better benefits, and after one competition, I saw my daughter and she had bought a shirt and the, the shirt said, some people lift weights, cheerleaders, cheerleaders lift people. Um, so she put me in my place a little and I don't know who's right, but you know, the concept of lifting up people in general, it, 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 was, it was a cute shirt, it was a great concept. What was your definition of uh, flexibility training? Um, give me one second. Oh, you didn't? I, okay, yep. I thought I missed it. Nope. So, perfect segue. We'll go to flexibility training, which refers to any exercise method that helps the joints, tendons, and muscles become more flexible over time. Um, tendons and ligaments, which attach muscles to each other and to bones, um, shorten as we get older. So, regular stretching aids to keep these the tendons and ligaments from shrinking. Stretching may actually be the most underutilized type of exercise today. We should be exercising probably three to five times a week and uh, before and after any kind of strength training and or aerobic exercise. However, if we're busy and we're running out of time at the gym or with whatever exercise we're doing, the one thing that many people often cut out is stretching before and after your exercise or as the routine as a whole. And shortened ligaments and tendons can lead to minor to uh, major tears in, in the tendon or the ligament, um, which then, you know, hampers mobility and movement. And even if you don't tear uh, a ligament or tendon, by having a, your tendons shortened, it can create an imbalance which can lead to muscle and or joint injury. So some types of aerobic training benefits. Um, aerobic training will improve your cardiovascular health, it aids in sleep, strengthens your immune system, and it can improve your brain power, which will allow you to do more at work or whatever else you enjoy doing. Um, so strengthening your heart, and it helps 
pump the blood more efficiently throughout your body. Um, working out reduces stress and it fatigues your body, which will aid you in your sleep. It helps you sleep longer and deeper um, if you have worked out during that day. You strengthen your immune system by increasing antibodies called immune, immunoglobins into the blood. And exercise has been shown to slow the brain's aging process. Um, there's increased blood flow to the brain, which brings oxygen and nutrients more efficiently. So let's look at some types of um, aerobic exercises. Let's see, on the screen here we have, we have running, jogging, swimming, my wife's favorite, which is spinning, hiking, backpacking, uh, karate, martial arts, snowshoeing, and group exercise. So you can do all of these or many of these exercises a lot of different ways. Um, You can do them alone, you can do them in class, you can do have clubs, there's hiking clubs, there's running clubs, uh, ballroom dancing, lessons, classes, uh, groups. And so you have a lot of different options. You know, maybe you wanna run alone, maybe you wanna run as part of a group, meet new people. And these are just some of the aerobic exercises that you can do. Um, if you enjoy gardening, gardening can you know also be a, an aerobic exercise. It can also be a strength training exercise, depending on what you're doing. And uh, you know, if you ask my wife, she'll say housework is an aerobic exercise, uh, especially after cleaning up after all the messes that I leave. <laughs> um, so basically, any activity that is going to increase your heart rate for a sustained period of time is considered aerobic. And the other part to that is what we had already discussed. It needs to be fun and it needs to be done on a regular basis to have physical changes in, in your body. So some different strength training benefits. Strength training increases your metabolism, your bone density, it strengthens joints, and it builds good posture. And a lot of times when people think about fitness, they think about, you know, running on a treadmill, cardio type based exercises. A lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of people enjoy lifting weights, but strength training can be more than just different lifting weights and strength training is important for everyone. Um, especially, you know, as you age, it, it has benefits because building the muscle. Building muscle increases your metabolism um, because muscles burn a higher, much higher percentage of calories at rest um, than fat does. Um, one thing that I was shocked to learn as I studied for my, my personal training test is bones are strengthened um, during strength training by putting them under pressure. Um, you are actually gonna build your bones and uh, make them stronger. Uh, so you don't just have to drink milk, you need to lift weights or lift people as my daughter would say. And um, that's important because, you know, as we get older um, or, you know, if you're clumsy like me, you're susceptible to falls. And uh, so by having a stronger skeletal structure with your bones, you're less apt to fracture. Um, a bone. Your joints are strengthened because they're supported by the muscles they attach to. Uh, therefore, stronger, stronger muscles relieve the tension that's placed on a joint. And um, you know, with with better muscle balance, joint balance, you're going to have a better posture. So there's a lot of different types of strength training. 
you can see, uh, you know, the top picture is weightlifting. There's a, a suspension training, um, body weight exercises, and yoga, which is a very popular strength training exercise today. So lifting weights can be done in a lot of different ways. You can have a workout that is a total body workout. You can isolate muscles, uh, alternate days that you work this muscle or you know your upper body or your lower body. You can work out on your own with a partner. And now they even have classes um, where you can get a group of say, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 people and they conduct the, the weight training exercises in, a, in, the, in class. You can do one set, you can have a circuit, you can do five sets. Um, and it's all gonna depend on what your goals are, your time that you have available. So body weight exercises are just that. Body weight exercises use your body weight as the resistance. For example, a push up, um, a squat without weight. These exercises require stabilization and may recruit more muscle than resistance training with only, say, a barbell or a dumbbell. Yoga is a form of body weight, body weight training. You only need to practice good form. You don't necessarily need any equipment. Suspension straps is another form of body weight training and the benefit for Suspension training is that you know you can do a bunch, do different body weight exercises in a variety of multi-planar exercise movements, um, and it, the aim is definitely to develop strength, balance, flexibility, and joint stability simultaneously. You can attack the joint angle and muscle length. Um, from, from different positions. And suspension training allows you to not use all of your body weight. So if you struggle to do a push up, you can, by moving your feet in the suspension training, you apply less force or more force so that you can actually do the exercise with the proper form if you couldn't do that body weight exercise. There's isometric exercises. So for an isometric exercise, the joint angle and muscle length do not change during the contraction. So an example of this would be holding a dumbbell in a, a curl position um, instead of moving the dumbbell up and down throughout the exercise. Isometric exercises only strengthen the muscles that are engaged in that one position. The benefit of it is if you have injuries, it can help strengthen and stabilize the muscles around the injury until you can get stronger so that you can then do the full range of motion in that exercise. An example would be say a rotator cuff injury um, where you can't lift your arm over your head. You can build some of the muscles around that rotator cuff uh, until, and, and it'll help to heal it, and it'll build stronger muscles to help stabilize and take some of the pressure off of the joint. So a lot of the strength training is now incorporated into uh, classes, which use a combination of barbell, dumbbells, kettlebells, TRX, suspension training, um, and body weight exercises. The workouts generally use a different template each day, and it's a growing industry because people enjoy going in, not having to think about what exercises they're going to do or work out. You know, they're kind of, they go in, they're told, this is what we're doing today. They do the exercises, and then there's also generally people there that can help you maintain proper form. Okay, flexibility training. So 
So the benefits of flexibility training is increased range of motion. Um, you release tension, soreness, you improve your mobility, and it reduces risk of injury. Um, there's some different types of uh, So range of motion is the measurement of the amount of movement around a specific joint or body. As we said a minute ago with this rotator cuff, how high you can lift your shoulder, um, how you can lift your leg. Those are all examples of range of motion. Better range of motion improves the body's mobility and adaptability, which in turn reduces the risk of falls or other injuries. If you trip, if you have better flexibility, you're more apt to be able to catch yourself and prevent the fall or lessen the fall than if you are stiff and you don't have that, that range of motion. So when you move, whether it be working out or throughout the day, you're breaking down your muscles and you're causing the swelling within the muscle themselves. So this isn't due to injury, this is just caused to fatigue and working your muscles. Um, stretching increases the blood flow, and, which also helps move the fluids through your muscles and your body, which reduces the swelling that you may have in your muscles and or your joints. One important thing whenever you're gonna be stretching is you do need to uh, warm up before you stretch because it elevates your muscles temperature and makes them more pliable, um, which they'll be more receptive to the, the stretching that you're going to. So there's many different types of flexibility training. Um, Okay, apologize for that. So there's a lot of different types of uh, flexibility training and um, some of we've already discussed. So we have yoga, you can just do, do a stretching routine, Pilates is a form of stretching. And then there's different types of, of stretching. Um, a dynamic stretch increases your range of motion and um, a static stretch is going to improve your overall flexibility. And if you've ever worked out and you get sore, you know, you, you go for a run and your legs are sore, um, that's due to a phenomenon called DOMS, which is delayed onset muscle soreness. And stretching, static stretching after your exercise um, is actually just as important as it is the dynamic stretching you should do before an exercise because it, it moves the fluids through your, your muscles, it breaks up lactic acid, and uh, it will relieve some of that soreness that you feel for the one to two days after you, you work out. So a static stretch, each stretch should be held for you know, upwards of 30 seconds. And it, it should be done two to three times. And with a static stretch, you're basically holding that pose. And it's important to breathe through the static stretch. Um, and where you start the stretch is not where you should end the stretch. Just so as, the, as you continue through that stretch, you're gonna be able to stretch a little further um, because when you initially start to stretch, your body re reacts to the stretch to prevent injury. So it tightens uh, your tendons and ligaments but once you start to breathe through that, and that's why it's important to do it for the 30 seconds, you can extend through your stretch and that will assist in building some more flexibility. You don't wanna bounce while you stretch. 
And you want to do static stretching slowly. So you don't want to go too fast into it because as we said, that's going to cause your tendons um, and your ligaments to react, uh, to pull back so that you don't injure yourself. Another tool during stretching is foam rollers and marathon sticks. Um, they stretch and massage the underlying tissues, which release tension and break up adhesions that your muscles will, may get during exercise. And if you don't have a, a foam roller or a, a marathon stick, you can do what my nephew did while he ran cross country is he used a rolling pin. Uh, just let your, your mom, your partner know that you've taken the rolling pin so they don't go looking for it. Um, yoga is a, is a great form of stretching and it's done by transitioning through poses, um, which increase your flexibility because you're lengthening and stretching your muscles and it's done in a safe and effective way. And again, if you're not, if you're doing it with others, they can help you look and correct your form. So does anybody have any questions? Hang on one second. So I'm working to unmute everybody so that if you have a question, you can answer it or ask it. You can answer it. That'd be great, too. I have a question. Okay. In yoga, since you're moving through poses, is that considered static? 